What's up, Superpower Reviewers? It's Ken Rudinia coming back at you with another video. I am proud to present to show you guys part two of my entire comic book collection. Today we're going to be looking at my DC short box, which is pretty much 95% Batman and 5% Swamp Thing. But before we get into this box, if you see anything that you like in this video, be sure to smash that like button. And if you're new here to the channel, don't forget to show your support by clicking on that subscribe button. So let's not waste any more time and let's get into this box. All right, guys, so we're going to start off this video with a Batman number 181 facsimile edition. This is the first appearance of Poison Ivy. You guys know that I love these reprints because I can sort of gauge how much I want to spend on the actual original copy. In this case, um, I wouldn't want to spend too much money on a original Batman 181 because this book is a little too campy for me. But yet, you know, it's really cool to only spend $4 on a book that, you know, costs, you know, $100 to $1,000 in real life. And this book also has the pinup in it, which is really cool. And here we have some more facsimile editions. And again, you know, so I have these books in real life, uh, you know, actual real original copies. And these, again, these facsimile editions save the condition of my actual books because I'm not touching my actual original copies, reading them where I can just bust these out and, you know, read these. Uh, this is a reprint of Batman number 232, which is the first appearance of Rajah al Ghul. And this is Batman number 251, which is uh, the first Bronze Age appearance of the Joker. And these are both Neil Adams covers. Um, I really love Batman number 251 the most. That is by far my favorite Neil Adams, Neil Adams book of all time. Um, it really kind of just shows what the Joker is today. He's a psychopath, maniac who kills for fun. While, you know, before this, Joker was very campy and very silly. And, you know, the character wasn't taken very seriously. All right, so up next we have some more Batman Neil Adams covers. These are originals. These are not facsimile editions. This is a Batman number 221. This is absolutely a gorgeous, gorgeous Neil Adams cover. Um, I, I always love it when Neil Adams draws Batman kind of like perched up on something. Um, cover's really cool. Story-wise... The book is okay. Uh, you do get to learn a little bit of German in this book, and uh, you'll you should be a pro at pronouncing Batman in German in this book after reading this. <laughs> um, here is another Batman Neil Adams cover. This is Batman number two twenty nine. Uh, this is actually a pretty interesting read. Actually, um, it's actually kind of kind of neat, but. Again, another really cool Neil Adams cover. All right, and here we have one of my favorite Scarecrow covers of all time. Um, I'm actually not sure who does this one, but if you, uh, this is Al Milgram actually. So um, this is Batman number 296. And again, it's just a really cool Scarecrow cover for me. All right, up here we have a Batman number 403. All right, not much to say about that one. So here we have my Batman Year One comic books. This is by far my favorite Batman story of all time. I absolutely love this story. I love Frank Miller's writing. I love Frank Miller's writing more than his actual artwork, to be honest. All right, getting into more of Frank Miller's stuff. Here is The Dark Knight Returns. This is book number two. Now, again, getting into Frank Miller's art, you know, I, again, I said I like his writing more than his artwork. Again, his writing in the story is amazing. I loved what, they, what he did with Batman and his take on Batman, but his artwork, meh. <laughs> um, this cover, I love. I love this cover. This is a classic cover. This is probably the best cover of the... Uh, out of the bunch but um, you know there's definitely some 
interior artwork in here that just kind of makes me cringe a little bit but again I love the story and here we have uh, part three and part four um, book one is in a different box and these are all first prints by the way okay here we have a Batman number 408 which is um, Jason Todd's second appearance, I guess, and this is where uh, Jason Todd's story is told in this in this book. Um, Jason Todd is stealing a wheel off of the Batmobile, and Batman's like, "Hey, you did a horrible thing. Let me take you as a Robin." <laughs> Alright, so this story is in continuation of Batman 403. Batman is trying to capture a murderer who is targeting young women, and I believe only blondes. <laughs> uh, so here is Batman number 414, and here is Batman number 422. Uh, I've had this book since I was a kid. And uh, this is not only a really fantastic cover, but also a really, really good story. The uh, the murderer who's killing all these women gets gets a taste of his own medicine when one of the uh, one of the women defends herself and actually ends up killing the murderer. Really cool story. And here is a Batman number four twenty three, the first and only. Todd McFarlane Batman cover. This is a first print and I recently submitted a copy to get signed by Todd McFarlane. And a statue of this cover is coming out really soon as well. All right, here we have Batman Death in a Family. This is book number one. So Batman 426, Batman 427, Batman 428 and Batman 429. This is the storyline where Jason Todd gets killed. And these are all Mike Mignola covers. Okay, and here we have a Batman number 497, uh, Nightfall number 11. This is the breaking of the bat, and this is when Bane does a pretty insane backbreaker to Batman's back and ultimately breaks Batman's back. <laughs> Here we have a Batman number 450. In this story there is a imposter dressed up as the Joker acting like the Joker and the Joker, the real Joker, is out of like commission for some reason. I think he's like kind of sick or something. I don't know. But in the next issue in Batman number 451 Joker has had enough and he comes back and reigns terror and is trying to go after this imposter. And in this cover, Batman number 451 is by far my favorite Norman Bray Fogel cover of all time. All right, and here we have Batman number 636, which is kind of a early issue of uh, Batman Under the Red Hood kind of starts that storyline. And here we have a Batman number 637. This is a really cool uh, book, actually. Uh, Batman and Nightwing uh, have a pretty epic fight with Amazo. And you, you kind of see in hindsight of what Nightwing really thinks of Batman. Like, he, like, is in awe on how this man moves and, you know, his, his tactics. It's really cool. And here we have a Batman number 638, and in this issue we find out that Jason Todd is in fact the Red Hood. And this is a Batman annual number 25, and this is the origin story of how Jason Todd gets resurrected and becomes the Red Hood. Alright, here is some Batman Rebirth books. Um, when Rebirth came out, I got really big into it, and these are the books I ended up keeping. This is Batman number one, and yet again, another Batman one, but a different story. Uh, this is the first appearance of Gotham Man and Gotham Girl. I might be wrong on that, actually. So if you know, comment in the comment section. It's been a little bit since I've read these. So, and uh, this was a, this was a, an a, a, okay storyline this one is definitely my favorite book out of the whole the whole story 
this one has some really great quotes from Batman that kind of, they touch me. <laughs> Batman number four and Batman number five. Oh, this one. Actually, you know what? This is my favorite Batman um, rebirth book. This is I Am Bane, and this book is absolutely amazing. Really, really, really good story. You have to read this one. If you're a fan of Bane, then you, you have to read this book. This book is great. Uh, this is uh, Batman number 21. This is the start of the button part one. And then we have the button part four, which is in Batman number 22. And this is a lenticular cover. Yep, yep. All right, here is a big lot of Batman and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This was the story that got me back into comic book collecting. When I heard that this was coming out, I was like, that sounds amazing, and I totally have to pick it up. And I did, and absolutely loved it, and it totally, <laughs> it totally started this whole thing of collecting books and getting insane again. So here is... All of these. Um, this, the first first series was really really good. Uh, this is a third print of book number two, and oh man, this is a great cover. This kind of reminds me of a um, of an Incredible Hulk number three forty with you know the reflection of of metal and stuff. Kind of cool. And number four and number five. Great story. Six. And then uh, here is the second series, which is actually my favorite out of the three. This is a cool Kevin Eastman variant. I, I normally went for the uh, Freddie, um, Freddie Williams covers. I didn't go with the Eastmans too much, but this was, a, this was a great story. Again, this was my favorite out of the three, was series number two. And uh, that's the finish of it. That's a Kevin Eastman co variant cover. And now this is the start of series number three, which is my least favorite out of the three. And uh, that's a Kevin Eastman variant as well. Freddie Williams cover. Freddie Williams cover. <clears throat> I did like the mashups. I, I do have to say, I, I did like the mashups in this series, but the story was okay. It wasn't that great. It got a little confusing toward the end as well. Okay, here is a Dark Knight's Batman Who Laughs number one. This is the origin story of how Bruce Wayne becomes the Batman Who Laughs. And this is this is my guy right here. This is my dude. This is my new favorite villain of all time. Love that guy. And here is the Batman Who Laughs series that came out. What? Uh, last year i can't even remember man time just moves on and i had to go with all of the variant covers this is my favorite one of out of the the bunch i would definitely get this one signed if i knew who the artist was <laughs> uh this is the batman who laughs the grim knight number one more variant covers this one's great too this one's absolutely amazing and that is the story that finishes up this is a great read great series okay and here is a dark knights number six this is signed by um francisco matina who did the cover of course very cool okay here is the start of my detective books this is a neil adams cover not Neil Adams interior art. This is a really cool book as well. This is kind of a um, a craven kind of feel. Um, this is a person who's out trying to hunt the Batman. Like I said, very craven versus Spider-Man kind of book. <laughs> this one. This is a fantastic cover by Neil Adams. I bought this book only for cover reasons and just look how epic it is. It's Batman jumping off of a biplane to land on top of another biplane while getting shot at. Who can do that? Only Batman. <laughs> 
This is a Detective Comics number 429. Um, this is also another really great read. And I'm not sure why this book is not a key, but this is, uh, in my eyes, the first appearance of Woman Dad. Again, I don't know why this is not a key, but this is a really cool book. This book makes you feel like a detective. And here is Detective Comics number 575. This starts Batman Year 2 with Batman with a gun. And then we have all the Todd McFarlane covers, Batman 576, 577, and 578. So here is the start of my Detective Rebirth books. Uh, this was a better story than the Batman books uh, of Batman Rebirth. In this story here, Kate's dad is coming up with a Batman army to kind of get rid of Batman because uh, he thinks that would be a better job, that would do a better job protecting Gotham than Batman. So they capture Batman, they kick the crap out of Batman, and it's up to this team to go and save Batman. There was a couple of good covers in this one. I think, it, yeah, it's this one. This one was a great cover. Clayface kind of taking over Batwoman. I like this one too. Flag is all torn up in the background, makes the bat symbol. Classic. Classic, classic. Batman number 938 and 939. And what else do we have after that? Batman 940. Okay, the last detective book we have in the box is a Detective Comics number 1000. This is the Bruce Tim variant cover, and this is a homage to a detective book. I can't remember the number off of the top of my head. Some good stories in here. Favorite story in here was Kevin Smith's. That was a great, great story. All right, the last books we have in this box are now going off to Swamp Thing, no more Batman. Uh, here is a House of Secrets number 92 facsimile edition. And again, with this book, I was able to gauge on how much money I would like to spend on an actual House of Secrets in the future. And um, off, based off the reads in this book, I'm gonna dump some money on one. <laughs> and here is a Swamp Thing number one. Again, a reprint to Swamp Thing number one. And this book is uh, only a dollar. My uh, number one is in a different box. I call it my money box. So here is the start of the original Swamp Thing run with uh, Bernie Wrightson and Len Wayne. Bernie Wrightson uh, art is absolutely fantastic in these books, along with Len Wayne's amazing writing. This is Swamp Thing number three, and this is the first appearance of Abigail Arcane and Patchwork Man. Interesting story in here. Really like this one as well. This is Swamp Thing number four. In here, Swamp Thing is in Ireland, and he fights a werewolf, which is uh, absolutely exciting. <laughs> Uh, here is Swamp Thing number five. This is kind of more of like your damsel in distress story, which is kind of different for Swamp Thing, I guess. I mean, earlier Swamp Thing, I should say. And in this book, Swamp Thing finds out that he can regenerate himself. A Swamp Thing number six. Here is Swamp Thing number seven, where Batman and Swamp Thing meet for the first time and get into a brawl which is epic. Swamp Thing number eight, nothing too much to say about that one. Uh, Swamp Thing number nine, my favorite Swamp Thing cover of all time and a really good story as well. And lastly, we have a Swamp Thing number 10, which is a classic battle between Swamp Thing and Arcane. Here is the Saga of the Swamp Thing number 21. This book retells Swamp Thing's origin. So all this time when we're reading, you know, Bernie Wrightson's and Len Wayne's story, we're thinking that a man turned into Swamp Thing when it's really not. Uh, when Alec Holland dies and goes into the swamp, the swamp pretty much um, takes over his conscience and the swamp does the best thing it can do to produce a man out of swamp material. 
and that is it. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to leave your feedback in the comments section. And again, if you liked anything that you saw in this video, be sure to drop a like. And if you're new here to the channel, be sure to show your support by clicking on that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in part three.